active universities fund actually funding this whole recreational program. People can play sport at whatever level they want. The idea of it is that it's all on offer, so people are taking part in something every week. There was that flexibility to be able to chop and change. Whereas this gives them an opportunity to actually say, well, yes, I'm a beginner, but I do want to give it a go, and they're not put off by those sporty students. We've tried to do many unique activities over the new to sport time. We've um, done cheek ball, we've done dodgeball, then wheelchair basketball, goal ball. So we've really tried to do a diverse range of activities for them. We can offer activity for a pound where they can turn up to any campus, whether it's University of Nottingham campus or Nottingham Trent campus, they can then get involved. The funding that Sport England have provided has had dramatic impacts on the physical activity levels and participation rates within universities. Rather than there being a, an assumption that one size fits all, now we can start to say, OK, you want to play sport at a particular time, in a particular way, at a particular level of competition, and we can now facilitate that and put it on. So we have a, quite a gap in our sporting offer, so we don't really do much for our semi and non-sporty students. This gives us an opportunity from their investment strategy, so we're able to deliver programmes for that population. The Active Universities programme has really enhanced sort of participation at Warwick. We've got 23,000 students and nearly half of them are members of Warwick Sport now. Students have loved particularly the UV events. It's a good way to get into sport maybe if you're not sporty. It makes it feel a little bit like a nightclub. Making friends from all over campus, all different degrees. You'd never meet half of these people before. You learn new skills. You actually learn how to play the sport. I definitely think I would have dropped out of university if, um, if I wasn't part of a sports club and uh, that definitely helped me find a sense of belonging. The difference in myself since I started doing exercise is ridiculous. I, I can get up earlier, I have so much more energy, I can concentrate more on my studies. It's something that I can't imagine my life without now. Many universities are investing back into those volunteers by putting them on leadership courses, putting them on coaching qualifications. I've managed to get my level one and two coaching course, which they've been kind enough to pay for, and then I've been able to deliver back a better service to the students.
Oh, there she is. Is that about right, that? Is that okay? Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the UK School Games 2015. This event, absolutely fantastic experience for these kids. Basically, the Olympic Games. This is wrong, is it? Amy Thorpe. Is it right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no, yeah, it is. So we've got Amy Thorpe in white for Scotland and Rachel Towell for Scotland as well. As mentioned before, when you get two players from the same country, you can often expect it to be a little bit tight. And also, the atmosphere might be down a little bit. But Rachel's moving in. Absolutely fantastic. Well, that was as quick as a flash. Standing work, into the groundwork. And then Rachel applied the strangle. So, quite sensibly, immediately, Amy submits. And that's a great fast start to this afternoon. So we'll now move on to the next fight, which is an all-English affair with Ella Ashwell and Amy Platten. Be interesting to see if this fight's as quick as the last one. That was impressive. The atmosphere is electric again this afternoon. These are the 44 kilo players, so this is the smallest group. Oh, what a beautiful left-handed Uchi Mata. Absolutely beautiful throw, inner thigh throw. And what's really good is there is that Amy hasn't just uh, sat on that throw, she's immediately gone into groundwork. And Ella was hanging onto her leg there to make sure Amy didn't escape and get into the hole down. So Amy is uh, miles in front at the moment. Be interested to see what uh, Ella can come up with if she can. It's a big ask. Nice footwork. Nice footwork there from uh, Amy. Looks as though Ella could be on the receiving end of a penalty here. We'll have to wait and see. Yep, Dave Harrison, the referee, has uh, given Ella a little bit of a wind up saying, please get on with some more judo. We want some exciting throws to watch. Yeah, so Ella's uh, taken note of what the referee has asked. And she's put a few attacks in there. Amy responded with that left-handed Uchi Mata. Again, the inner thigh throw. You just feel as though Amy's got that big throw left in her again. You just feel as though Ella's open for that. So we'll have to wait and see. But Ella's definitely trying. She's fighting back. And the right-handed, oh, wasn't that just absolutely beautiful? Left-handed Uchi Mata again, same throw, except she was responding to uh, Ella's movement. So, uh, especially for those who uh, are not familiar with judo, two sevens equals ten in judo, so that's it. 
The exact translation is half points was Harry. So now, the atmosphere is cranked up now. England versus Scotland. We've got Ryan Thompson from Scotland, Daniel Holt from England. These boys, these young men are under 50 kilos, which is uh, the lightest category for the men. And I can assure you, you'll need to watch these carefully because they're like little ferrets. They'll be running around, whizzing around at a million miles an hour. So don't blink, blink because you might miss something. There you go, I was just saying that. So Ryan's, work, Ryan's working away there on the ground. He hasn't got his legs in with the control, but he's uh, ferreting away with his hands, trying to apply a strangle to Daniel's neck. Getting nowhere, so Dave Harrison, the referee, gets him up again. Both players getting advice from the coaches during the break. Oh, this is interesting. Strong attack there by Daniel, but countered by Ryan, but not enough. He only landed on his backside, so it's not a point. It needs to be on the side of his body. This is a great little fight, this. This is going to get interesting. You can see. This is definitely going to get interesting. There's going to be some scores in this fight, I'm absolutely certain. Oh, it's a big throw. Mm. Shoulder throw there from Ryan. But Daniel managed to uh, slide off it. The fight continues. Both working away with the grips. There's a big shoulder throw again. Followed it through. That was hip on. And the reason why that was hip on was because it's what we call arching your back, a bridge, where you've got your head and your feet. It's always controversial when we have a, a nippon given for what looks like a bridge. The reason why it's uh, banned is because if you land on your head, arch your back and land on your heels, then it's dangerous for your back. So therefore, it's uh, punishable by nippon to the opponent to encourage Daniel not to do it again. Hopefully, he won't do it again. To be honest, though, I have to say that was a little bit harsh. Some of the referees here on the table were going to give up Zari there, and I could see why they did that, because I think they feel as though Daniel twisted a little bit out of it. Ah, it's moved up now. Our next competitor to enter the arena are Ray Hanks in white from me and Jimmy Henry Gates and Piaz from Brazil. So here we go. This is a wonderful contest now. We've got Ray Hanks from Wales in the white and Enrique from Brazil, as everybody knows, Rio's only a year away. For those who don't know, judo in Brazil is absolutely huge. After uh, soccer and volleyball, beach and indoor volleyball, judo is the next biggest sport in Brazil. It is massive. And that looks like a good Yuko or Wazari there, but the referee's not giving a score there. I think the referees at the table are saying uh, you've missed it. It's understandable why the referee missed it, because he's on the opposite side. So Roger Bostock, Paul Tanzi, who are looking at the monitors, are saying, uh, are you caught? Quite rightly so. So Enrique from Brazil takes the lead. When you watch uh, the Olympic Games next year, don't be surprised if the Brazilians get something in the region of half a dozen medals. They are that strong and that powerful. And of course, with them being at home, they'll fancy the chances even more so. So Enrique has now moved into a hold down. He's got it on again, Tati Shiogatami, long ways holding, as you can see, he's on the length of his body. But Ray is fighting back, he's doing really well, another millimetre or so, well done Ray, excellent. But like any good judo player, Enrique hasn't given up, one door closes, another door opens, and he carried on. Beautiful groundwork from the Brazilian there. 
Brazilians, very similar to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, are absolutely masters on the ground when it comes to all the arm lock strangles and hold downs on the ground. Enrique's getting a little bit of a warning there. He put his, looks as though he's put his fingers inside the jacket, which you can't do in case uh, your opponent twists the jacket, hurt your fingers. Oh, that was good from uh, Ray there. He was uh, looking for a bit of a counter. But Enrique, seems to have, his feet seem to be too fast. It seems to be too sharp for uh, Ryan. And he's grinding out a roll over there into the hold down. A variation of uh, Scarfold, Kezigatami. It's quite an unusual way he's got him, but he's got his head, he's got his chest, it's close tight control. I don't honestly think Ray's going to get out of this one. He battled his way out the last one with real guts and determination, but it's not going to happen this time. Enrique's moving over. Beautiful. Well, we have to say the Brazilian was very impressive, as I can assure you they will be in Rio next year. Possibly second or third strongest nation next year in Rio. That one. Yeah. They, they've, just, they've just been on. Yeah. Uh, yeah some. It's, it's old now. So now we've got Ryan Thompson and we've got Daniel. We've got Ryan Thompson now and we've got Daniel Holt. Ryan's from Scotland and Daniel's from England. Great atmosphere here for the UK school games. All the teams and players are up supporting each other. Nice strong attack there, left-handed. But a beautiful self-sacrifice throw there from Daniel. That was absolutely outstanding. Sumigeshi, corner throw. Self-sacrifice throw where you throw yourself first to throw your opponent, but that was impressive. And Ryan takes that one on the chin. There was nothing he could do about that one. That was fair and square. The women's under 70 kilos. We've now got Kelly Peterson from England and Tommy Imry from Scotland. A strong attack straight away. The two players are going for it straight away within seconds. Less than 10 seconds and we've got an attack from each player. No score there, I think some of the uh, players from both sides actually wanted to score there, but it's not a score. Players have got quite uh, an oblique stance at an angle to each other, right to right. Could lead to a bit of a stalemate situation, but we'll see. Players working away on the ground now. The atmosphere is always cranked up when it's one of the Celtic nations against England. Well, I'd say Miss Emery seems to be the more dominant player, but there's not a great deal in this at the moment. But I feel as though Kelly needs to get an attack in just to keep uh, the referee off her back. And that's a massive attack again. But that's a counter. No, it's not a counter. Well, that was 50-50. That was strong. The UCO, not a lot of people are agreeing with that. And quite rightly so, the referee uh, takes off the UCO, quite rightly so. This is the beauty of having the monitoring screens. If the referee gets it wrong, it can be corrected immediately. And the fight continues. 
What a wonderful OG Gary. Major in a sweep. And again, it looked like hip on from here, but uh, the referee's given was Harry, so the fight continues. Now, all that Kelly's trying to do is get that leg out now. She can escape that leg, keep control of the top half of the body, which she didn't. So that means uh, Tommy goes on to a front, and it's stopped by the referee back to the middle to restart the fight. So we're back to the war of attrition on the grips. Well, that's a good score. It's a, a Makakomi, a winding throw for the, for the Wazari. So there you go. Two sevens equals ten, as I mentioned before. So that's a, a wonderful win there for uh, Kelly. As always, the players have to adjust their attire. Smart, nice and smart. We're very uh, strong believers in uh, etiquette and presentation in judo. One of the main reasons why we uh, remain in the Olympic Games. So we've got Paige Wilkes now from England, also from England, Sophie Roots. Lively start. They've got the grips. Beautiful. Twist and turn as a counter there by Sophie for Wazari, seven points. Immediately, like a really good play, goes into the groundwork. And Paige is twisting and turning. You can see how fast she's arched about, but it doesn't matter how high she gets, so long as Sophie has control of her head and shoulders. The referee is still a hold down, and that's it. Thank you very much indeed. Well done, Sophie. Impressive. Well, it's all action this afternoon. I don't think one single fight's gone anywhere near to time yet, so that's looking good. Well, it's men under 60 kilos now. We've got Callum Game from England in the white and Francis Millwall from Scotland. I've got a sense this is going to be a good one. <laughs> and you can hear the Scottish players cheering on their player. Full of atmosphere, great spirit between the Scottish camp, as there is with all the teams. It's been a wonderful atmosphere so far today. So Francis is uh, diving away there into the groundwork, looking for an arm, looking for a strangle. He's got control of the head. Is he going to try and roll Callum over now, or is he happy to draw out the arm? He's taking him onto his back. This is looking very promising, it's very strong. Look how strong those legs are of Francis. Now, Callum has managed to lift him off the mat, which means the referee can call Mate stop, and he has to release. Powerful start from Francis, powerful start. Good control on the ground there. So if that isn't a warning to Callum, then it should be. Yeah, good attack, strong attack from Callum. 
Looks as though Francis is waiting for his chance here. I think Francis could be in for a penalty here, I think. Yep, I don't think that's any surprise. He's only got himself to blame for that one. So he now has to up the ante and uh, let's see if he can put some attacks in. Oh yes, strong attack from Callum, but also equally as strong resistance. And that was wonderful, the way that Francis latched onto Callum's arm and a leg. And instead of being under threat, he actually turned it round almost into the hole down. Got a Mate situation here. So the bat to the middle. Pretty explosive this fight. You feel as it could go either way. A little bit of lull, the way in each other up. They might not look too active, but there's a lot of action going on there. Trying to get control of your partner, trying to dominate. Beautiful. Both boys are working hard here. Callum's obviously decided he doesn't want to go to groundwork. He's, uh, I think he's sending out the message there that he wants to stand up. Uh, interesting to see how Francis takes that now. So whether Francis wants to look for opportunities on the ground or is he going to say, well, that was a fantastic... Fast, it's super fast left-handed tie Toshi body drop and he's followed it up straight into groundwork and once again he's going for that Judy Katama the arm lock he's got control of Callum's head he hasn't quite got the arm Callum looks pretty strong there driving into him so he can't straighten his arm out and the referee calls Mate because he can see it's a stalemate situation so he gets the players back up again Very entertaining fight, this one. You just feel as though something's going to explode at some point. Interesting. Right-handed attack there uh, from Callum. Big attempt there from Francis, but Callum had it uh, completely sussed and in control and just dropped his hips to break his opponent balance to kill the technique off. Oh, Callum is behind. My mistake, sorry. <laughs> Francis has got two penalties, so he's going to have to work. He's going to have to work here and keep working. Now he's going to have to take the initiative. Now he's now going to have to take the fight. We're in the last minute. He's going to have to take the fight to Callum and get a positive score. And he's managing to make Callum look a little bit negative. So whether the referee, I think so. I think I get the feeling Callum's in for a penalty now. But Francis has to keep the pressure on. So it's 2-1 on penalties now. So Francis needs to keep the pressure on if he wants to win and not allow Callum to look good. And Callum needs to be careful with that. Bit of a weak technique. There was no way he really thought it was good. Now Francis has started to stay down now, quite rightly. Everybody is screaming for him to get up because scoring down there is going to be difficult. It's not impossible, but difficult. So he's got the message, he's up, 15 seconds, he's got to go for it now as Francis. He needs either a score or to put Callum under so much pressure that Callum gets a second penalty. Which is it going to be? Ah, interesting, here we go. Ooh, that changes everything now. So Francis now got another penalty, so that changes the fight completely. So basically speaking, Francis needs to come up with something special and it's not going to happen. Well, that was a seriously hard-fought fight, that one. Very, very hard-fought fight indeed. Good commitment from both players. Not the prettiest. So, Callum wins the fight on penalties. Sometimes, sometimes it can't be too exciting. You've just got to get that win. Our next competitor to the arena are Scott Thompson from Scotland in black and Joshua Green in blue from Northern Ireland. So we've now got uh, Scott Thompson from Scotland and Joshua Green. 
from Derry in Northern Ireland, whose father, Paul Green, is a living legend in Northern Ireland judo, somebody I personally coached and trained myself and uh, qualified as a coach. So, Joshua Green, whose nickname is Gringo, see how he gets on with Scott Thompson. As you can see, Scott's got a Union Jack on, which means he's represented Great Britain. So, obviously, this is going to be a tough fight for both players. Strong. Look how powerful Scott is there. That was sheer brute strength there. And he scored a UCO five point score because he managed to throw uh, Joshua onto his side. One, one thing I do know about Joshua, he is a fighter, he won't be giving up. But Scott does look immensely powerful. And Joshua tries a, a self sacrifice throw which wasn't successful. Scott's decided he didn't want to go to ground. I have a sneaky feeling here that Scott fancies himself for a big hip on, big throw here. Joshua got a little penalty for dropping down, negative. There's the left-handed technique from Joshua, he's trying. But, but Scott Thompson just looks just so much stronger and so much more powerful. He's wrapping up, he's wrapped up the belt, he's controlled his partner, he's trying to drive him over onto his back. This is looking pretty promising. If he can keep the body tight, which he can't, so that's why the referee's called it, and they're back up again. Joshua's doing well here, he's still losing. From going down early on, you felt as though Scott was going to come in with some big guns. Which I still think he's got in his uh, locker, to be honest. There you go. Almost, but what a beautiful counter from Joshua there. Scott launched in for a massive Uchimata in a thigh throw, then Joshua somehow wriggled off it and almost countered uh, Scott. Very, very, very entertaining. I haven't got a clue who's going to win this now. Scott's still uh, in front though. Yeah, Joshua throwing in some tentative plays, but this is powerful from Scott. That was very, very effective there. It's a, another UCO five-point score for Scott there. He came in with one technique. Joshua reacted from it, and immediately Scott reacted again. Action, reaction is a massive phrase in judo. Just having a quick look at the scoreboard here because I thought the UCO was to, uh, yeah, I thought so. They corrected it now that Scott, Scott Thompson scored both UCOs. Just a slight hiccup there with the referee on the wrong score. It's all sorted out now. Has Joshua got something in surprise here, or is Scott eventually going to throw his apart for 10? It just, just looks so powerful. They're in the last minute now, so we've now got to see something special from Joshua Green. I think one or two people here are just questioning whether Scott did what we refer to as a head dive, where if you come in for a technique and you go down towards your head, obviously we don't want a player ever to get hurt or injured. If a player comes in for a technique like Scott did then, which was uh, like a Uchimata type net technique, because the lower you take your head, the higher you can get your leg, which means you can lift your partner further off the, off the mat and throw them, but Obviously, we don't want a dangerous situation where somebody could end up with a, a serious neck injury. Now, if Scott is guilty of a head dive, unfortunately for Scott, that would be on Soko Mack. It would be disqualification. So that's quite interesting. So they've decided not. Uh, quite rightly so, because I felt Scott did uh, rotate his head a little bit to make sure it was safe. So we're down to the last 40 seconds now, and Joshua Green has got to come up with something big. And you just feel as though the more Joshua tries, you feel as though Scott's going to pick him off. Is Scott going to go for one last big attempt of a throw? Now Joshua went down to floor again. Scott is allowed to take advantage of that. The referee will give him a few seconds. And we'll just see if he's going to penalise him again. I think he is. Paul Tanzi, the referee, stopped it. So yeah, it's a penalty. 
Well, it's bingo time now for Gringo. Joshua's got to get stuck in now. He's got to produce something very, very special. Here we come from Scott. There you go. We knew we were waiting for a big one. In the end, it wasn't quite the finished product, but it was still a massive throw. A wrapped up shoulder throw. It's a Wazari to Scott. And that's basically it. But Joshua can be very proud of himself. He certainly didn't give up. That was that. Two young men, two young gladiators having a wonderful go there. Joshua never gave up there. That was tremendous. But in the end, as I think we all predicted early on, we could see how strong Scott was, and that proved out. But I think Joshua can take pride the fact that he didn't uh, lose a fight in the time. He wasn't a pond. So uh, let's see what Joshua has in the rest of the rest of the day. But Scott is looking very, very strong for Scotland. <laughs> So we've got the men under 60 kilos. We've got Oliver Barrett from Wales and Douglas Ventura from Brazil. These Brazilian players seem to have so much flair, so much skill, so much personality, almost as if they've got it all. So let's see how fast. Let's see how fast Douglas is. You feel as though he's uh, got lots of footwork, as he was, as we say. You can see how he's up. On certain, there we go, massive, oh my goodness me. Well, poor old Oliver had snow coming off his boots there. I don't think he should uh, be too upset about that. I have a sneaky feeling this Douglas is going to go all the way today. And that was a beautiful Marotta Cianaghi shoulder throw. And uh, you have to take these uh, losses and victories in your stride sometimes. These are only young men, they've got another, they've got a tomorrow. It's going to be interesting to see uh, Douglas against uh, Scott Thompson from Scotland and I think that's going to be a tasty fight. So the atmosphere is cranking up and cranking up, it's getting better every minute. So now we've got Dylan Thomas against Kai Ulrich. And we've got some fast jinking from uh, Kai already. A little bit loose on the attack there. You've got to break your partner's balance. You've got to have... Yeah. Well now, Dylan's moving in. He's moving in for on the groundwork here. So the referee calls uh, stop and they go back to the middle now. So both these young men are certainly trying. There's no lack of effort. There's no lack of enterprise. Trying to get the result that they want. There's another rolling hip type throw from Dylan. The guy's moved in, he's got the hole down on. As you can see with the referee, put his hand over. But Dylan. Beautifully, quite skillfully turned onto his front, got out of the hole down. Now, can Kai take that arm? You can see he's got his arm, he's trying to get control of his body with his legs, which exposes and isolates the arm, but he's instead 
that door closed, so he's opened up another door and he's moved into the old down. Unfortunately, he's just lost that one now, but he's still working away. He's now going back to the arm lock, and it looks as though Dylan's going to try and stand up. If he can stand up, the referee called Mate. Uh, Kai dropped down a little bit there. Sometimes the referees may give a penalty for that, but not on this occasion by the looks of it. Nope. So the fight continues. There's everything to fight for. Over, just over two minutes to go. Bit of a lazy attack there from Dylan, not too effective. Very easy for Kai just to counter him and roll him into the ground to take advantage of the situation. He's working away there. He's still working away. The referee must be happy that he's getting some progress there, otherwise he would have called Mate by now, which he does now. So Paul Tanzi, the referee, obviously felt as though we weren't going to get a result. So back up we go. So, one of these two young men is going to have to come up with something a little bit different. And that's the score, that's it. And we've got a Wazari. That's a seven point throw, a huge throw. The referees had a look on the monitor, they seem happy with it. It was quite a loose technique, I was surprised he got him over. But he, he did. And he's moving into the groundwork now. But it looks as though Kai is quite uh, tight underneath, he's not going to penetrate his de defences there. So we've got a bit of a lull in proceedings just while the players adjust their kits. Get them all in the correct position. And we're off again. So this is a classic physical game of chess is this one. It's difficult to difficult to see how Kai's gonna get this uh, seven point score back. But he's trying. He's moving into the groundwork. Fancies his chances down there. There's an arm there waiting for him. He's taking it. This is strong, he's got it. Whoa, that is fabulous. Absolutely superb. <laughs> Jugatami, straight arm lock. So we're back now to the smallest women that we have at the UK school games. The under 44 kilos we've got Ashley Barnacle and we've got Amy Thorpe from Scotland. Ashley is from Wales. So off the go, big arm, and that's a big arm over the top, straight away from Amy, straight in for the technique. Got a Wazari, seven point score, straight into the hole down. And oh, well done, Ashley. She's wriggled out of that one. Yep, just. But Amy, quite rightly, is keeping the pressure on. She's not giving up. She's going to try and get that hole down back. But it's gone. It's away. So they carry on fighting on the ground now. Looks as though Ashley wants to take a turn on the ground now. So, referee shouts Mate twice, plays in Hurham. Good atmosphere in here, it's quite noisy. So you feel as though Amy's definitely the dominant uh, player here at the moment. Once again, she can get a throw, but they have gone to ground. It looks as though Amy's driving forward, trying to get Ashley onto her back, if she can do that. But Ashley's very, very clever there. She did let uh, Amy roll her, but she kept the momentum going and went onto her face. So no score. And now it, and now Ashley's back in the game. She's now taking the initiative with the top grip to try and roll her over. So again, both girls clashing. Not really getting a particular technique, but that's a fabulous turnover there by Amy. 
She's got control of Amy's head, and as you can see there, Ashley's got both uh, both legs wrapped round one, which means Amy's not allowed to have the hold down on. Amy needed to have got a leg out there. And big <laughs> big dive there from Ashley. She was uh, going for it there. I wouldn't quite uh, advise jumping towards your opponent because you tend to get lifted and uh, thrown backwards. And again, they've gone, they're just keen to go, that's it. Well, if you dive at somebody like Ashley did there, unfortunately, Amy quite rightly used Ashley's force and momentum to turn her over onto her back. End of contest. Women under 44 kilos are Ashwell from England and Rachel Towell from Scotland. It started off at a frantic pace with the grips. Footwork going in as well. Ella trying to break the grips. She must feel as though Rachel's got a strong grip on her, otherwise she wouldn't be trying to break it. Interesting one for the referee here. There was control of the sleeve there. I'm not sure which way he's going to turn as to who was defending and who was illegally controlling. Uh, they're just checking on uh, Ella underneath the sleeve just to make sure that there's uh, no hard ob objects, plastic or anything like that. So, carry on with the fight now. Everything's uh, safe and sound and in order. Rachel seems to be dominating quite strong with the grips here. Although Ella seems quite content. A lot of gripping going on here. I'm not quite sure which way the referee is going to go here as to who's defending the most. They've decided Ella has been the most negative, so she gets the penalty, which I thought was a little bit harsh. Nicole, the national coach for England, is glancing at me and agreeing with me. You just feel as though Rachel's got a dominant over the top grip, and if she gets the timing right, she feels as though she could throw Ella. Looks as though Ella could be in trouble again. Yep, I'm afraid so. That's twice now for Ella. A little bit unfortunate, but there again, Rachel has got a dominant grip, making Ella look impassive. Ella needs to do something now. She's got to convince Roger, boss, not the referee, that she's attacking, she's being positive, she's looking for a score. End of day, that's it. Ella had no option there. She had to open up and try and come up with something, and uh, Rachel quite rightly just waited for a moment and uh, picked her off very nicely and uh, threw her down for Ripon. Perfect score. So it's men under 50 kilos now. Oliver Chesney from England versus Ray Hext from Wales. Big, big attack. Oliver seems to be very, very positive straight away. Blasting him for dynamic attacks early on in the fight. Looks as though Ray's just uh, weighing his options up here, trying to control, trying to control Oliver, trying to keep him at bay. And yes, good one. You see what Ray was doing there, he was quite happy to let uh, Oliver attack and attack and he was waiting to pick him up and it looks like he was going for an Uranagi, a rear throw. As Oliver comes in for the throw, Ray uses his momentum to actually throw, throw him. Hey. 
Uh, blocking there by Ray, negative, so the referee gives him a, a Shido, a little penalty. You can definitely see with Oliver's with his shoulder movement, you feel as though he's going to come in for a massive shoulder technique at some point. And he's done it, and he's got a Yuko, possibly Wazari, no, Yuko, five point score. He's kept it tight, he's kept Ray in a bundle, he's now got control of his head. Shoulders. All he's got to do now is get that leg out of the two legs of Ray. Ray uses that opportunity to turn him over. So Oliver's not going to get the hold down, but he is a Yuko up. Once again, he fills up. There it goes. That's a big technique, which I thought was on its way. And that's a Wazari seven point score. I think a lot of people felt it could have been hip on. It was uh, flat on his back, but there was a tiniest of the little break. He's got uh, Ray in the hole down again. Can Ray get out of the hole down again? This is tough. He's, he's really going for it. He's, Ray, he's twisting his body, he's turning his body, but no chance. A very, very powerful and effective performance from Oliver there. Very impressive. I have a feeling we're going to see that shoulder throw later on. Today, scoring for a massive hip on. Oh, we have been thoroughly entertained this afternoon. Not one single fight has gone to time. We've seen lots of scores, lots of hold downs, lots of throws. That's what we want. So it's the men under 50 kilos now. We've got Finlay Allen from Scotland, and Antonio Enrique from Brazil. Let's see what this Brazilian goes straight for the overarm grip. Tries to throw him over left handed immediately. And the Scottish boys supporting Finlay the best way they can, really cheering him on. This Brazilian looks rather cool and calm. The referee shouted Mate, but once again, the atmosphere is that good. The players can't always hear the referee. There's a penalty there for uh, the Brazilian for going to the edge without any good reason. It's left-handed is uh, Antonio, so that could be a little bit awkward. Generalize, generalizing. Two people out of ten are left-handed in judo. That's a sort of normal figure that people accept. But Antonio's moving in here. That's good. I feel as though uh, Antonio's going to get a throw in here somewhere, but Finlay is still fighting back, so let's see what Finlay can come up with. Over the top again, Coach Igaki going inside, then Ochi. You do feel as though Antonio has got a big gun. There you go. But, uh, the referee is called Mate, so the score won't count. You definitely feel it with those combinations, all the different throws going in, one after each other from Antonio, that he's going to score with a big throw sooner rather than later. He's got the belt grip, big hip, left hip going in, and again, looks like he's putting another one in. Finlay's gone for the counter, and Antonio's putting another one in. Finlay's put one in and scored! Well, who would have expected that? I think most people want a Yuko for that one. Well, I don't think anybody was expecting that. Finley sneaked in a little uh, coach Igaki there for. So the referee calls Mate. Finley's getting all the advice he could ask for from Colin Woods in the coach's chair from Scotland. And Finley's moved in for a big attack. Antonio's gone for a big attack. And Finley's trying to get off. And he's counted him. Beautiful technique from Finley for it was Harry. Seven points. And uh, Antonio's not happy, he's thumping the mat there. Uh, something we don't really allow in judo very much. And Roger Bostock, quite rightly so, is uh, giving a bit of a ticking off. As you can see from the <laughs> signals there, he's saying uh, no more of that, please. That's against the spirit of judo. We just don't allow that kind of, those kind of antics in judo. It's not on. So has Finlay got another big throw to finish the fight? Or, as with all the attacking from Antonio, is Antonio going to come out with a big throw to finish the fight. It's a very, very exciting, very, very interesting fight. <gasps> There's a big attack from Antonio. There's Finlay sussing him out again. 
The one thing you can say for Finlay here, you can see now that he's quite happy to wait and allow Antonio to attack because he feels as though he can react to Antonio's attack to counter him. And now Finlay's decided to go on the attack himself with a short left-handed shoulder throw. Now this is where this could be dangerous. This could be really, really dangerous. Finlay's arm stretched out, but he's managed to tuck it back in. Antonio's trying to squeeze the arm out, but I think Finlay has escaped. Has he escaped? Yes, he has. He's got two legs round uh, Antonio's leg. Antonio needs to get that leg out to secure the hold down. And he's not going to get it. My goodness me, he's got some bottlers, this young Finlay. He is fighting hard. He's really doing his team proud. I don't think anybody expected Finlay to win this one. Oh, but that's a tremendous throw there from Antonio. He's got five points for the throw. It looks as though possibly could have got seven. And they carry on into groundwork. But Finlay uh, quite fancy a bit of groundwork himself by the looks of it. Good uh, opportunity to waste some time. Finlay's looking a bit, uh, a bit tired here at the moment. But he's got to stand up. Let's see what he's made of now. This is where it's all about bottle now. When you're tired and you're just in front and you've got to keep in front but your opponent's coming at you all the time. This is where it's all about bottle, all about your bravery and your courage. And Finlay seems to have buckets of it. Good stuff. Well, we're down to the last minute now. Both players look tired. Both players are breathing heavy. Finlay now has just got to contain himself, keep control, and he's looking for the counter, and he's got him. And that's another counter, Tani Atoshi, valley drop type throw, onto the back, well from the initial start of the contest, I don't think many people predicted that, but Finlay has got the heart of a lion there, and has come back and fought really well. Easily one of the most entertaining fights we've seen today so far, more fights like that's the first fight. There, that's good. That's gone down to the last minute. Our Brazilian friend doesn't seem very happy. We just don't allow that in judo. He must shake hands properly. And uh, quite rightly, uh, one or two boos around the uh, arena, quite rightly. We have a, a very important phrase in judo, honour and dignity in victory and defeat. For example, if you're in a fight, you're not allowed to throw your jacket off and uh, do a lap of honour on the judo mat. We don't allow that kind of disgusting behaviour in judo. So now we're moving to the men under 50 kilos. We've got Ryan Thompson from Scotland and Bernardo Scarpelli from Brazil. Cage is out from both players, both trying to get the dominant grip. There's all Ryan settling in. Get the feeling it's going to explode into something in a few seconds. Bernardo seems to be the busier of the two. So whilst uh, Bernardo went to the ground there, Ryan followed him, but the backup standing again now. Who can get possession of the fight? Who can get their dominant grip first? Well, Bernardo's putting the te techniques in now. Whilst they don't look as though they're really going to throw Ryan, Ryan needs to be careful that he doesn't look as though he's not attacking, so as to avoid having a penalty against him. Oh, what a beautiful technique. Left-handed from Ryan, that was absolutely outstanding. Rolling tire, toshi type throw, as good as we've seen today. What a beautiful technique. It was obviously weighing his partner up, waiting for the opportunity, waiting for the, a fraction of weakness, getting Bernardo off balance, and then throwing him flat on his back. Well, we have been treated to some wonderful judo this afternoon. So only one contest so far, I'm not sure any contests uh, so far have gone to time. Next into the arena, we have in white, Kelly Peterson from England, and in blue, Asia County from Wales. 
So it's women on the centre kilos now. Uh, Kelly Peterson and Keisha Tanti from Wales. And Nicole Nunn, national of course with England, sits down. And so does Joe Mellon, another top international. It was a national coach in Wales now. It's a bright start to the fight. The players are working on the ground there. Understandably, the referee was looking a bit bemused there. I'm not quite sure where the players were going. It's fast, it's fast and furious. They're uh, certainly trying to get a grip. Okay, she seems to have a slight edge, but she's received a penalty there for going out off the map for no reason. So Kelly's working hard to get her grip, but it's just not, get, it's just not working for her. She moves in for a, a winding technique like a Makakoma, it's unsuccessful. And keisha has gone straight to the ground, working away. It's not happening on the ground, so the referee gets him up again. Three minutes to go, plenty of time for the fight to continue. I think there was a, looks as though Kelly might have ducked under there. You're not allowed to duck under because it means your opponent has two hands on the same side, which uh, you're not allowed to do. So Kelly gets uh, a sheet over there, three point penalty. And then Geisha moves in for a self-sacrifice throw, which has uh, actually put her in jeopardy because Kelly's got control of the top and the head. She's he's got her leg out, but then Keisha manages to twist onto her front to nullify the whole event. So it's back up on your feet. There's a lot of activity in this fight. Everything's happening. There's no lack of endeavour in this uh, particular fight. Both girls seem to be going for it. We've got a massive attack. A beautiful counter there, Yuko there, a five-point score for Kelly. And she's moved into the groundwork following that throw. She's now looking for Judy Gitami across arm lock. She's got control, but Keisha looks very, very strong. She's now moved into the hold down. And now, can Keisha get out of this one? Keisha's proved to be very strong, twisting and turning, but on this particular occasion, I think Kelly's got her. It's very tight. Every time Keisha moves, Kelly reacts to counteract it and gets the balance again. And I'm afraid it looks as though that's it now. And it is. Well, there's no lack of commitment in that fight from both of the players. It was excellent. I'm sure Keisha's going to come back and uh, do better in the next fight. That's Well done, Kelly. That's a win for Kelly Peterson from England. So we're moving on, it's the women under 70 kilos, we've got Paige Wilts from England and Emily Ritchie from Scotland. And I think if we were giving out gold medals for cheering, I think Scotland are definitely the winners at the moment. Uh, certainly helping with the atmosphere. Both players battling away there. They've gone to ground. So it's stopped by the referee, bring the players back to the middle.
That's a bit of a poor attack there from Paige. I'm surprised she's not been penalised for the referee there. She didn't really have a proper dominant grip and uh, did flop to the floor somewhat. But the referee's let it go unless he's going to penalise them when he gets back up. Because sometimes they allow the other person to uh, come down and take advantage, which Emily has done as she can stretch that arm out. She needs to lift her hips up, keep it going. But Paige is very supple, very flexible. She's hanging on in there. She's an archer back. If she can get her legs over, she might be able to save her arm on this one. If she can't, and Emily keeps working, she needs to lift her hips up, be strong. It's blatantly obvious that Paige is right, but she's got it. Well done, Emily. That was good. Naturally, we don't want any players to get injured, so we don't encourage any of the players to hang on to their arm, allow it to get stretched or hurt or injured in any way, shape or form. We'd far rather the players tap and submit immediately so they can fight for another day. There's no point getting an injured arm when you're a youngster. Most of these players hope they're going to be judo for the next 20, 30, 40 years. So we don't want any injuries. But that was exceptional by Emily, keeping the control, not giving up. She kept going and going until eventually Kelly had no, uh, Paige had no option but to submit. Just going to go to Oh, we're doing the handsome creeps here. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely sensational. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So the referee's brought the players back to the middle. Scott Thompson is uh, winning so far. And a bit like his previous, here comes the big one. And that's it. Left-handed, shoulder throw. Flat, flat on the back for Dylan. And uh, I think it's fair to say that Scott has looked one of the more impressive players that we've seen this afternoon. Although we have been well entertained. Looks like Scott Thompson's certainly one of the favourites in this uh, weight category, but we'll have to wait and see. I have a sneaky feeling this is going to be a very, very exciting fight. We've got Francis Millward from Scotland against Douglas Ventura from Brazil. Douglas was impressive in his last fight and I think Francis is looking forward to this. Looks very assured of himself as uh, Douglas from Brazil and here it comes. Massive technique. The referee's given a Wazari. I think a lot of people might want to dip on, but I agree with the referee there. A little bit of a break. The beautiful technique. Very slick, very smooth, very skillful. Collie Woods, the Scottish coach, is trying to help France as much as he can, but I'm, I'm afraid I think uh, Douglas is going to be an outright winner here and I have a sneaky feeling we're going to see another massive throw to finish off the, finish off the contest. You can see the action reaction there from Douglas. Trying to get a reaction, fainting, pretending to go in for the technique, getting a reaction from Francis and then launching him for a major technique. Pretty convinced one's coming, here it comes. 
Francis is hanging on and he's doing his best, but I think he's in for a, a bit of a penalty here from Bill Taggart, the referee. I don't think the referee's got any option. He's actually gone the other way. He's gone a Shido to Douglas. He must have uh, had a, an illegal grip. So off they go again. Douglas must be thinking to himself, how am I going to get out of this? So he tries an unusual uh, winding technique, which hasn't worked. So Douglas dives in for the groundwork. Beautiful. Sumigesh has rolled him over. He's keeping the pressure on all the time, not giving Francis any time to settle or to think. And now, as I mentioned before, the Brazilians are absolute geniuses on the ground. So Douglas has now got a hold down on, long ways holding right across the body. And Francis is struggling, is twisting and turning. If he can get two of his legs around one of Douglas's, then he's out of the hold down. However, look how agile Douglas was there, just skipped over. End of the contest, two was Harry's. Douglas is looking mightily impressive. I don't believe Francis uh, could have done much about that. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see if Douglas uh, ends up being the winner today. Francis tried his best, but sometimes you just accept you got beat by the better man on the day. And Douglas is looking very, very impressive for Brazil. And next So, carry on to the next fight now, on the 60 kilos. We've got Joshua Green from Derry in Northern Ireland and Kai Alledge from England. Both players with a lively start, lots of movement. Oh, lovely footwork there from Joshua. Didn't score, but uh, was able to take his partner to the ground. And he's working away, beavering away there. Looking for an arm, looking for a gap. Trying to control the arm. Trying to unsettle Kai, but I don't think it's going to work. I think the referee's going to get the two players back to the middle. But he is. The referee, to his credit, is allowing Joshua all the time to get a positive result here. And it's looking good. He's got to get, but Joshua's got to get out of those legs. Joshua in white is working away. He's got control of the top, which is important. There's no point in getting the leg out unless you've got control of your partner's head and shoulders. He's working on it, is Joshua. But Kai looks as though he's getting ready. Yes, he was. He was getting ready to sneak onto his front. So it's a Mate situation. Very exciting start to the fight. Just under three minutes to go now. The fitness level, levels of judo players is pretty phenomenal. I think we're going to get a little penalty here. Not quite sure who to. That's oh, to uh, Joshua. Joshua. Oh, they both got a penalty. No, they haven't. Do apologise. One penalty. Uh, to Kai. And Kai's settled in. He's uh, what we call Sangaku. His leg. He's got a triangle shape with his legs controlling Joshua. But Joshua's just hanging on there, taking his time. Interesting development now in this fight. Someone's going to do something a little bit different now. They both seem to be cancelling each other out, so I think someone who needs to change direction. Bit of a flop and drop there by Kai, but he's got away with it. So Joshua takes advantage, goes straight to the ground. And Joshua's working away, he's working away, is Joshua. It's looking very positive. He's got the Osai Komi. He's actually in an arm lock position, but looking for the Osai Komi. The hold down. The hold down's now broken. And as you can see, Joshua is trying to control Kai's body into trying to isolate his arm to stretch it out for the submission. Uh, the referee's seen enough. That was a good effort, that by Joshua, though. Oh, we noticed there, uh, Carl was shaking his elbow a little bit there, so that gives us an indication that uh, Joshua was pretty close with that arm lock. It's 
still seem to be cancelling each other out and, uh, on the standing work. Neither player looks as though there's a, a clinical Ippon throw, a big technique coming up. Bit of a flop and drop there from Kai, that was weak. Uh, Scott Main, the national coach, you can see reacting there, sort of looking to the referee, is that not a penalty? But Bill Taggart, Bill Taggart also from Northern Ireland, is not having any of it. Now Joshua's working away now, he's got tight up top, he's controlling the head, can he get his leg out? If he can get his leg out, he can get the hole down on. But Kai's hanging on and not allowing it. So back to the middle now. I'd say Joshua's definitely uh, in front here, but neither, neither player is uh, miles ahead. I just feel as though if either player can come out and do something a little bit special and get at least a UCO, five-point score, that would be enough to win the contest. And someone's got another penalty here. So, that changes things a bit now. Kai's got two penalties now, so Joshua may actually decide to coast a little bit now. As long as he does it within the rules, that's perfectly fine. They both seem to be trying, but nobody seems to get a clinical result. That was a big technique there from Kai, but as you can see, Joshua had it pretty well controlled and was able to bring his partner back and was looking for the groundwork. You can hear the English team screaming at Kai to stand up, stand up, let's get a throw in because Joshua was wasting time on the ground, quite rightly so, as a tactic. Uh, is Joshua going to put a throw in, which could put him in danger, or is he going to uh, take the penalty? Now, interestingly, I'm not quite sure who's going to get the penalty here, whether Kai's going to get the penalty for going to the edge, or whether Joshua Green's going to get it for pushing back. Yeah, Joshua Green's got the penalty. They both got a penalty each there, so... Again, Joshua's just going to sit on this now. I can't see why he would endanger himself going in for a big technique only to be countered. Got a nice little foot sweep in there. Wasn't a score, but enough to knock Kai to the ground, which means Josh goes straight to the ground, take the time out. He's going to play her down there, look impressive, look out to for the referee, and that's it. Very tactical, quite a professional performance there from Joshua. Once Kai got the two penalties, really, that changed the fight and also change everything that Joshua was going to do. So that's a win for Joshua Green there from Derry in Northern Ireland. His father will be pleased, Paul Green, living legend in uh, Northern Ireland Judo. Women, women under 44 kilos, Amy Platt from England and Ashley Barnacle from Wales. It's a wonderful occasion in the UK school games for some of these players, depending on what they do with their careers, whether they carry on with judo at an elite level or they go to university. Oh, and that's a beautiful left-handed Uchimata there from Amy Platt. And it's hip-on, the referee's given it. End of contest. Uh, one or two disgruntled voices there from the crowd. Uh, understandably so. It was a beautiful uh, Uchimata, left-handed, in the thigh throw, but I think a lot of people felt it was only Wazari. Nope, that's it. It's been given. Full point. Uh, Dave Harrison, Paul Tanzi are happy enough as the referees. They've seen it on the monitor. They're not uh, challenging it. Uh, the Welsh National Court is uh, having a little bit of a word, saying I'm not quite sure about that. Can we have a look on the monitor? Uh, Paul Tanzi, a highly experienced referee, is saying yes to Bill, giving him the nod, so Bill Taggart got it right first time. Yep, got it right, they're sticking to the guns, the referee. So that's a beautiful lip on to uh, Amy Platten, so poor old uh, Ashley. Unfortunately, that was a bit short-lived, that one, that was uh, over and done with in next to no time. Uh, 
Yeah, no, like, like say for example, Next is the arena. In the fight, we have Tella Ashman from England. And in blue, Amy Cole from Scotland. So, back to the women. Women under 44 kilos. Ella Ashwell from England versus Amy Thorpe from Scotland. And again, you see how Amy's got a height advantage. She always brings that strong left arm over the top to throw a partner with uh, Koshi Garuma, a hip wheel. I don't think there's a score there with the throw, but uh, Amy's looking uh, very strong and very dominant at the moment. Getting loads of encouragement from Kirsty Feenan. Ella seems quite happy and content to uh, bide her time. It's an excellent attack from Amy, but Ella's obviously got this a little bit sussed, and so she was able to spin out of it onto her front for no score. And get a sneaky feeling here that Ella's going to allow Amy to come to her towards and take that arm over, and Ella might be looking for some kind of counter to that grip. It's not working though. Ella's got score there, Ada giving a Yuko there, the referee's giving a Yuko, five point score uh, to Amy. Amy has now kept the grip and driving on, trying to get Ella onto her back. But it's not going to work. Ella's now decided she wants some groundwork, but it's uh, a stop situation. Back up. It's interesting, if Ella's going to continue to allow Amy have that grip over the top, then you'll think sooner or later, Amy's going to end up with a big throw, but you can now see that Ella's not having it now. She's changed tap, but that was a beautiful counter. Ella came in, but that was a fantastic uh, counter technique there. And it's a Wazari, seven points, quite rightly so. That was good, and now she moved Amy's boots and arm lock, she's tapping. Very good. Very impressive from Amy there. She was throwing, she was going straight into groundwork, looking for an all down as well, and finished off with the straight arm lock, Judy Katami. Ella quite sensibly tapped as soon as the arm was stretched. There's no point trying to be a hero at this age. You want to look after your arm if you're in the Olympic final, then that's a little bit different if you're prepared to let your arm get stretched. But at this level, you don't want people getting injured, so as a coach, you would always advise your players to submit early. And this is going to be a pretty exciting fight here. We've got Oliver Chesney from England, who was impressive early on in the day. Antonio Enrique from Brazil, who has also been quite impressive. And immediately both players are going for it. But I think somebody's going to go for 10 here. I've got a sneaky feeling. And oh, absolutely fantastic. No messing about there. Immediately into groundwork, Oliver moved in for a strangle. Antonio had no option but to submit. And that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Within a matter of seconds, getting a strangle on the ground. Very, very good. It's nice to see because the strangles and arm lots are important because that's senior judo, his strangles and arm lots. So to see these young men and women doing the strangles and arm lots at this age is uh, very, very encouraging for when they become full blown seniors. Well, we're back with the men under 50 kilos. So we're back with the men 50 kilos. Finlay Allen from Scotland and Ray Hex from Wales. And you can hear that fantastic support from the Scottish fans. They are definitely the champions when it comes to cheering and encouraging and supporting their players. Got a little bit of a little bit of competition now with the uh, Scottish against the Welsh, which is nice to hear. 
Both players looking for the opening, looking for a gap. Finley's attack there is a little bit weak. Ray, Ray was easily uh, able to uh, counteract it and has gone straight to groundwork. Referee calls a halt back to the middle. With the tap by Finlay, you could see how he drew his partner on there. That was excellent, the technique. But fortunately for Ray, he was able to read it and was able to uh, avoid it, skip off it. Less than three minutes to go now, and neither player looks as though they're particularly dominant over each other. So we we'll have to see which player can come up with a plan. Combination, get the footwork going, offset their opponent. Finley's tried that left-handed drop, shoulder throw again. A little bit of distance that time, that's why it wasn't successful. And Ray, quite rightly, is moving into the groundwork, taking advantage. But Finley also likes the groundwork, and he looks as though he's moved round. He has done, and he's managed to get into a hold down now. But Ray, as you can see, with the two legs round uh, Finley's right leg, and he's got out again. And it's a hold down again. I think I think Ray thought the referee shouted, Mate, stop then. And Ray went and stopped, which he shouldn't have done. So Finley's got the hold down on again, and he looks as though he's got it strong this time. It's uh, what we call Munigatami, a chest hold. If I was Finley, I'd keep your head down. Don't, don't let your head come up. Ray is fighting. He's not giving up, isn't he, Ray? But that's it. That's a good win for Finley. A little bit of a surprise win there, though. Didn't look in the contest at the moment, he was going to get a hold down out of that. But that's a good win for Finlay. We've got a men's under 50 kilos uh, fight now with Daniel Hope from England and Bernardo Scapelli from Brazil. At these Sainsbury's youth games, the atmosphere is fantastic. And we've got a drop technique there from uh, Bernardo, but not very effective. And quite rightly, that's impressive. That was fantastic from Daniel there. Bernardo went down, wasn't a particularly good technique. Daniel straight to the groundwork, saw the opportunity for Juju Gatam with a cross arm lock and applied it very, very quickly. And Bernardo quite rightly submitted immediately. Very impressive. Good to see the what we call transition or tatuaza into Niwaza, the standing into the groundwork. It's really important during this period for these young players who are going from young men's and women's judo into full-blown senior judo. So it's the women's under 70 kilos now. We've got uh, Tommy Imri from Scotland and Keisha Tanti from Wales. Uh, that's a good technique. A little bit loose, a little bit floppy. That's why Keisha was able to uh, get off it, not land on the back. And Tommy's gone straight for it in the groundwork. Here comes the onslaught of support for the Scottish players from their Scottish fans. That's a beautiful move there. Left-handed hip throw there from, uh, from Tommy. And they've uh, just gone into the advertising boards there. Everybody's safe and sound, back to the middle. Now, this looks interesting now, because Tommy's got a proper grip now, and so has Keisha, so something could happen here. Cancelled each other out, they've gone to ground. 
Keisha looks very uh, positive there. Looks like she's definitely trying to get a result on the ground there. Looking to apply a strangle. She's come out. She's changed her mind. She's gone for the arm. She's got her arm through. This is looking very dangerous for Tommy. If she can stretch that arm out, she's put her body weight behind the arm. She wants to put it, that's it, get that arm underneath. Now stretch towards the head, bring the arm right out. Keisha needs to use her legs more. Oh, every time she lets go, Tommy brings the arm in. Well, that was very impressive from Tommy. I must admit, I think most people felt as though Tommy had had it there, as though Keisha should have had that arm out. I think when Keisha sees that next time, she'll regret not taking the arm out for the full arm lock. She may not get that opportunity again. Good bug hip technique again from Tommy. Big technique though from Keisha, that's it. That was as big a boom as it gets. Massive technique there. All sorts of Gary type hip technique, driving right through. And uh, Tommy ended up flat in the back for the full Ipon 10 point score. No arguments there. So Tommy adjusts her kit, has to accept defeat. And that's a good win for Keisha. Entertaining fight again. Under 70 kilos. Sophie Roots from England and Emily Ritchie from Scotland. You can feel the temperatures rising in this cauldron of the uh, Sainsbury's school games. Yeah, both girls having a go there. Emily being very positive there, driving forward, making Sophie defend. And Emily's moved into the groundwork now. She's looking to release Sophie's left arm. If she can drive her arm through, keep control with the legs. She, she lost uh, Sophie's head there where you, you tend to control. If you can control your opponent's head, the body follows after that. Very important to control the head in the groundwork. So this time Sophie's got a big strong grip. Attempts a technique, but Emily read it very, very easily. So second to ground again. She obviously quite fancies going for the arm lock once more. Back to the middle. I feel as though one of the players has to get a proper top grip here to have a proper dominant, to be in a dominant situation so they can come in for a full technique. Neither player seems to be able to come in for a complete full technique, more of a, a drop-in. Well, I think Sophie's made a mistake there, just laying there was just inviting Emily to take the arm, which she has done. She's staying with the arm, is Emily. I'm not quite sure she's going to get it. And I don't know how she's doing, but Emily's going to put herself in danger there. And Sophie's almost got a, got a hold down on. Well, Sophie now has uh, got what we call Sangaku on, where you triangle your legs. That's it. That is very, very impressive. Very difficult to see for non-judo people what was going on there, but basically speaking, Sophie made a triangle shape with her legs, which puts her in an extremely powerful position, and because she had Emily's head and arm, she has to have an arm in. She's not allowed to just have two legs around the head, and uh, that forced uh, Emily into submission. A little bit unexpected, a nice surprise. And it's good to see such excellent, complicated senior groundwork taking place. Next, on to the mat, we have Kalke in white from England. And in blue, Douglas Chura Amar from Brazil. Under 
60 kilos. We've got Callum again from England and Douglas Ventura from Brazil. Walking around in a big circle, just sussing each other out there. Both going for half grips and letting go. They've got the grips now. See what's happened. Good at strong attack from Callum, but you just feel as though Douglas is winding up for a big one. There it goes, there's one of them. Bit of a drop technique there from Callum. Needs to be careful. Yes, you can see he's moving. That's fantastic. Well, that's easily by far the most mature professional move we've seen today. There was lots of preparation, lots of break in the balance, a lot of action and reaction in the combination, which uh, followed by Marota Sienaghi, big strong shoulder throw for the full match from Ipom. Very impressive from Douglas, the Brazilian. Is there anybody here today going to beat him? I very much doubt it. And on the 60 kilos, we've got the very, very impressive so far. Scott Thompson from Scotland against Kai, Kai Allledge. And the, the fight sets off at a frantic pace. Once again, Scott is looking strong and dominant. What, is, what can Kai come up with? Yeah, you feel as though Kai's going to get a penalty if he doesn't do something soon. He's uh, flopped a bit there, but Scott's not bothered because he can take advantage of that going into the groundwork, which he does. He's tucked up the opposite side of the lapel. He's wrapped up Kai's body nice and tight. He's got him onto his back, and all he has to do now is get away from those legs and try and get flat down. <coughs> but it's not going to happen. So back to the middle, engage again. Mate situation, and uh, Kai gets the penalty. So Scott looks as though he's got the dominant grip there. Kai's just flopped to the ground there, so I'm not sure if one's going to get a penalty for the gripping or for flopping. Yep, Kai's going to get a penalty for flopping, however, also for holding the tips of the sleeve. Uh, Scott's also going to get a penalty, so we're a bit penalty out at the moment. What we want to see is lots of big throws. You just feel as though if Scott does get his grip and he can move, you feel as though he could be pretty impressive and launch him for a massive technique. Kai doesn't seem to have any answers. He feels as though he's waiting all the time, defending all the time. You just you can hear the Scot Scottish uh, team shouting for another penalty for Kai. I don't think it's going to be far long coming. This is an opportunity for Scott to move in. Now he needs to put him under pressure. It's a matter of situation. I think Kai's in for another penalty. And from this, if Scott puts the pressure on, I think he's going to get a golden opportunity for a massive technique. Yeah, Kai's up against it now. One more penalty, and that's it for Kai. So Scott now is in a position where he's confident enough to move in for a massive throw. Big technique. You can see how he's twitching, his leg turning, trying to get a reaction. In it comes. It uh, looks as though it's going to be a no score because he managed to wriggle onto his front. Pretty impressive from Kyle there. So there's still over two minutes to go, so it's an awful long time for Kain to go when he's already on three penalties. Not to get another penalty within that two minutes is quite difficult. So that's a massive advantage for Scott now. He can basically just take his time now, pick his moments. Uh, we've got the referee coming over to see the monitors. Not quite sure what, uh, what that's for. We'll soon find out. And that's it. We did mention it was a long time, two minutes, so uh, unfortunately, even with two minutes to go, unfortunately, Kai has uh, accrued four penalties, which is uh, Ansoku, Ansoku Maki, which is disqualification. A little bit a little bit disappointing and somewhat depressing. We want to see some biggie ponds. <laughs> so 
So, another win for Scott, just as impressive, not maybe quite as spectacular, but he's still on the road to, uh, road to victory at the moment. That's a beautiful Wazari counter there for Rachel Towell. That's seven points. That's a strong lead. Ashley's got to come up with something special here. You get the feeling that Rachel's going to come in for another big technique. I've got a feeling this fight's not going to go to time. And I think Rachel feels the same as well. She may need to change the technique a little bit. A little bit too predictable for that, but she's launched into the groundwork now. Looking for the arm lock, looking for the strangle. Ashley Banakel from Wales, Rachel Tal from Scotland. Again, the left-handed technique from Rachel. She's definitely looking for the second was Harry's Rachel. She didn't want to mess around here. She wants to get this fight over and done with. And Ashley's got to come up with something special. And Rachel, they've gone to ground there. She's gone for the strangle. Rich, uh, Ashley's trying to say that the jacket's over her face. Very dangerous thing for a player to do that. You're better off protecting your uh, neck and strangle rather than uh, trying to tell the referee what, how to do his job. So we've got a, a matter of stop situation. Yeah, Rachel's got a two-sided grip there. That means she's got to attack straight away on that side. It was a strong attack, but Rachel was able to contain it. Take advantage now is Rachel going into the groundwork. She needs to move faster than that, yeah, quite rightly so. She's got up now. You just feel as though once Rachel gets half a decent grip, she's going to launch in and get a, another, another big throw. But Ashley's definitely not giving up, and there it is. There it is, there's a big throw coming in there from Rachel Towell. That's the one I think we all predicted and we knew was coming. Ashley, hard like a lion, fought for it, certainly didn't give up. Wonderful, fabulous support from the uh, Scottish team there. Doing the classic football cheering where you turn your backs onto the uh, arena. Women, under 44 kilos, Amy Plan from England and Amy Thorpe from Scotland. This is going to be a good one. Look at that, they've set off at an electric pace. This is fast and furious, is this fight? They're both going to work away. As you know, Amy Platten has had that beautiful left-handed Uchimata. Amy Thorpe has had that big, strong, dominant grip with the left arm over the top. Both players have been highly successful so far. Yes, yeah, goes for Yoko Tomonagi there, side stomach throw there, was uh, Amy Plan. Both players look for something on the ground. 
looking at Dave Harrison's face. The referee looks like he's going to call Matty in a second, which he does. Get the players back. We want some entertainment with some big throws. So you can see how Amy Plant's trying to get on the inside, left-handed for her Uchimata, and you can see how Amy Thorpe is trying to get that left arm over the top to dominate and then roll in for her big hip techniques. Uh, the referee's coming to the table. I dare say he thinks there's a bit of a penalty somewhere along the line. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, Graham McClacken, the uh, referee in charge, has come to have a chat with the referees as well. So we've got the referee, we've got monitors, we've got a referee in charge. So hopefully between us all we can come up with the right and correct decisions every time. Let's just see what they were discussing. And it's a uh, defensive negativity from Amy Platten. So uh, I think the, the girls just need to get on with the fight now. Big attack from Amy with a left-handed Osoto. Osoto Gaki basically att attacking on the outside. But Amy Platten's moved in for the Juji Gitami for the cross-arm lock. She's got the control of Amy's head if she can stretch that arm out. Amy's looking in bother. You can see the panic bringing a leg over for support. If Amy Platten can keep that pressure on, keep that pressure on. Amy Platten's got to keep her right leg on Amy's head. This is it. That's it. Well done. Well deserved. That was all about persistence there. Never, ever give up. Never give up. Amy looks as though she's uh, allowed the arm lock to go on a little bit too long. As I mentioned before, at this level, you should never be hanging on to your arm. As soon as you feel any stretch or pain whatsoever, you should be submitting. Whilst obviously these players want to win the UK school games, it's not the Olympic Games. Save it for another day. So hopefully Amy won't be too injured. It'll just be a little bit sore. And then she'll come back later on. But if or anybody young out there doing judo, when somebody puts an arm lock on, the arm lock's applied. Don't be a hero and hang on to it. Just submit and uh, ready and fight for another day. Our name is left him out there, I'm sure she'll be perfectly fine. The medical team will have a quick look at her arm and I'm, I'm sure it'll be okay. Just a little bit of uh, wounded pride, a little bit of a stretch of the elbow. The next competitor is going into the arena. Oh, Francis Newbold in white from Scotland. And in blue, under the bag from Wales. So now we move on to the men under 60 kilos. Francis Millwall from Scotland. Wearing the world famous sporty pads there, where you've got wonderful coaches like Pete Gardner and John Buchanan, and you've got Oliver Barrett from Wales. Oh, absolutely devastating, absolutely superb. The movement was brilliant, how he set that up, prepared it, got Oliver off balance. Moved in for a beautiful move in left handed Taitoshi body drop for a big massive hip on. That was very, very impressive. Excellent. Well, we're going to be entertained like that up for the next three days. It's going to be a great UK school games. Here we go, men under 60 kilos, 
Joshua Green from Northern Ireland, from Derry, and Dylan Thomas from Wales. Both these players need a win here. They could do with a win to get something more out of the today. Dylan follows straight up into ground, changes over. Now Joshua's going straight into ground for the arm lock. It's looking good. Always lost the arm now. That was pretty close. He's now gone for the opposite arm. So Paul Tanzi, the referee. That's the place to come back to the middle and restarts the fight. Neither player's dominated yet, but uh, Joshua again reacts there. And again, he's latched onto the arm. He's got his arm through. He's stretched it out. This is looking good, and he's submitted. That is fantastic. Absolutely superb. So quick. So quick. Dylan Bailey had time to tap. He's already tapping. The referee gives Ippon full score. So that's a very, very impressive win there. That's what we like to see with these young players, where they're moving into the groundwork straight from throwing each other or going into ground with a tattoo as a knee was a linker, which is what we want. Women, 44 kilos, the last fight of the preliminaries before we go into the finals later. Ella Ashwell from England and uh, Ashley Banakel from Wales. And the players are off at a frantic pace, a beautiful Kouchi technique, inside leg sweeping technique there. By Ashley for a Yuko, five point score. Now she's looking for the hold down, she's trying to control. Ella up top, but she's not. Ella's managed to wriggle and twist and turn. The referee is called uh, Mate Stop. So the players come back to the middle. So they're off again. Who can get that grip? Get hold of your partner, two hands on. Push and pull. Action, reaction, and launching for the big techniques. There she goes, but it's countered. Oh, that was absolutely beautiful. Ella moved in for what looked like a really beautiful, strong technique, but Ashley counteracted it, reacted, and then threw Ella down to the ground for a Wazari, a seven-point score, and then straight into the hole down. If Ashley can keep this, but well, Ella is wriggling, and Ella has wriggled. She has wriggled and wriggled and managed to get onto her stomach, but it is a score. So it's looking good for Ashley now. She's got a seven-point score, two five-point scores. For those who don't do judo, I won't try and complicate things about how everything adds up. But now, Ella has come up with her own seven-point score. These players are really entertainers. We've got throws left, right and centre. We've got hold-downs again. Ella's in charge now. She's got the hold-down on. Now, can Ashley wriggle out of this one? Ashley's on her back, but Ella's looking very strong, very dominant. But Ashley's doing it again. Goodness me. We are being definitely entertained here. These two young players are giving us everything. Two Wazari throws. We've got more throws, and we've got two Yuko hold downs. Everything's happening. This is very, very exciting. Oh, and another Yuko for Ella. Oh, it's a Wazari. The referee's given Wazari. So that's it. Ella's won. Well, that's really tough on Ashley. Oh, what a fantastic fight. In such a short space of time, so much action going on. I don't think anybody could catch the breath on that particular fight. And that's tough. That's really tough on Ashley, but well done, Ella. Congratulations, ladies. That was a fantastic fight.
Good afternoon everybody, welcome to the finals. We have got an absolutely incredible atmosphere here for the finals this afternoon. Setting off with the men under 50 kilos with Oliver Chesney in this uh, semi-final from England against Ryan Thompson from Scotland for this semi-final. Everything to play for. Both players having a go, throwing the techniques in. Nobody really looking as though they're going to get a score as such, keeping it tight. But Oliver's gone to ground again, he's going looking for the strangle. He's working at it. It's a Mate situation. So that's Mate stop back to the middle. So off the go again. It's the final at stake here. Oh, it's a beautiful counter by Oliver. It's got the Yuko, the five point score. Straight to groundwork. Back up again in the middle. What, so what's Ryan going to do now? He needs to come up with a plan. Yeah, Oliver still seems to be quite happy to put a lot of pressure on. So the Scottish ones were looking for a bit of a penalty there for Oliver for going down, but it was a genuine attack. So Ryan's looking very positive, he's looking for his grip, he knows he's got to show something now, he's in for a lovely left-handed technique, he's got him! Oh, what an outstanding left-handed Uchimata! What was poor old Oliver thinking of? I think at first, initially, he didn't think Ryan had got him for the technique, but Ryan was persistent, he continued, hot in, got under his centre of gravity, and whizzed him over for a beautiful left-handed Uchimata. Absolutely outstanding technique. Well, let's hope the rest of the finals are like that. We are ready for the second semi-final of the boys of the 50 kilos. Please welcome them to the arena in white. Men under 50 kilos, second semi-final, Daniel Holt from England versus Finlay Allen from Scotland. Both these young gladiators have fought well so far today. Who's going to reach the final? Oh, that's absolutely amazing, beautiful. Oh, Uchigari in a in a reaping sweep throw. That was absolute class. In 12 seconds, we have been royally entertained here. Everybody, this is fantastic. What a beautiful spectacle for judo, these young gladiators throwing in the throws and the techniques. It can't get much more exciting than this. Women under 70 kilos now, semi-final A, Kelly Peterson from England versus Emily Ritchie from Scotland. Both players weighing each other up, looking for the grip, looking for the advantage. Remember, especially for our people who are not judo anoraks like me, judo is very simple, you need to get your grip to get possession of the fight. Now, here goes Kelly moving in for the arm lock, she's got control with the legs, see how the cross, now she's changing tack into the hold down. She's going to lose the hold down but she'll stay, oh no, the referee's called Mate. I think she might have been hoping to allow to continue there to go in for another arm lock. Not the case, so the players are back on, changing grips, breaking grips, getting grip. Moving all the time. Yeah. 
worth it. I think we're edging towards a penalty here, probably for Emily, I think. Yep, that's a Shido, three-point penalty. So that means Emily now has to up her game a little. What a fantastic turn. Give it, yes, yeah, the referee's given it upon, quite rightly so. Emily flattened about, beautiful technique from Kelly Peterson. Uh, the uh, referees are looking at the monitors. Uh, Graham McLacken, the senior referee, I think, leant over and said, oh, and they've, they've downgraded it to uh, Wazari. I think that was probably because of Tani's little bit of lack of control towards the end of it. It was a little bit loose. Not to worry, it's still a fantastic lead for Kelly Patterson. Gives her the opportunity to do it all over again. So now Emily has got a lifeline. She needs to come back now. But it's a long way back for Emily. Plenty of time, though. To, and there's another big... Ooh, nearly technique. And uh, Kelly, uh, Emily, sorry, just about managed to wriggle out of that one. But now Kelly's moved in, into the groundwork. Looking for the Jujigatami. Across straight arm lot to stretch her arm out. So that it's tender on Emily's elbow. So she submits. And that's it. Excellent piece of work there. And uh, Emily's just uh, stretched her elbow a little bit there. The medical team are straight on. As always, the uh, athlete's welfare is the uh, utmost importance above everything else. And uh, Roger Bostock, the referee on the mat, has called over Graham McClacken, the uh, senior referee. They're going to have a little bit of chat. Seemed fair enough to me. I think it'd be very unfair not to give it to Kelly. They would have put, yeah, quite rightly so. so. That's a win for Kelly. The medical team will look after Emily. She seems to have uh, twisted her back a little bit. So hopefully I'm sure she'll be okay. Um, one good thing is she doesn't need to fight for the rest of the day so she can uh, sit back and enjoy the wonderful experience of these uh, UK Olympics, the Sainsbury's School Games. We've just got a short pause on at the moment, uh, just while the medical team uh, look after Emily.
you spend too much time doing one thing, it's damaging. It's damaging in all sorts of ways. You take away the quality of your life. So for someone to just do academic studies for three or four years and not do something else as well, that would not be a good outcome for them or for the university. Sport plays a big role in that. If you go back 15 or 20 years, what you'd have seen is not a great deal of activity beyond the traditional sports. What we actually had was quite a traditional offer of sport. So if you want to play sport, you had to join a club, you had to train twice a week and you had to compete. And what we understood is that actually sport can deliver a lot more than that. And we need to deliver our sport in a slightly different way. And the element that was lacking for us was having that option that people could dip in and out of to attract a wider group of students who weren't attracted by that initial offer. The one thing that the universities we work with are getting very confident at doing is consulting their students who are not necessarily interested in sport and trying to understand what would make them interested in sport. They're forever telling us getting involved in these types of projects is for fun, it's sociable, they're making lifelong friends. We're really kind of seeing more buy-in from senior people at the university and that's through them seeing the benefits through their students. It gives you a sense of calmness, it gives you a sense of perspective, it means you sleep well, it means you get up the next day and you perform better. Those are all good reasons why sport can help your academic performance. Having a healthy body results in having a healthy mind, which I think is beneficial to the student. A lot of students are suffering, mental health is a big issue. Things like sport, activities will certainly help in eradicating the amount of mental health issues that we have here. So our counselling service sees over 2,000 students per year and we're hoping that actually if they have more outlets then that's something that will really help them. Essentially it means we're keeping students, people that may well have said this is too much for me, I can't cope with the new environment, have made friends, it means they're going to stay and that's a great thing educationally, but it's a great thing for the financial bottom line when you think about the amount of fees that people are paying. The first year or the first term even is a very vulnerable time, a lot of dropouts around that time and we know that there are more opportunities for people to get involved in sport activities then they're more likely to feel integrated into the university community that therefore they're more likely to stay on in university and complete their studies and, and achieve. From our research universities are telling us that it helps them with attracting students to pick their university. 35% of all students said that they did look at what did that university offer them you know for their student experience. When students come to universities now they're actually investing in their own education so the students want to feel that they're getting value back. We know the link is strong between sport and the student experience and employability. Universities which invest in their sporting facilities are likely to attract the university students that they actually want. Is it does contribute to the wide objectives of the university. How employable are my students when they leave in three or four years time and we know through our research the students taking part in sport are developing life skills and skills that you know employers really want to get their hands on. What we do know through our survey is that more students are satisfied with their sport experience whilst they're at university and that's improved over the time that we've been investing in higher education. Active universities investment has helped us to convince the university hierarchy that sport is really important. We now have an institution-wide strategy for sport that talks about investment in all of the resources that can make sport really thrive. And for that reason, we're going to be eternally grateful to the investment because it's made a massive difference. I love watching sport, I love watching athletics and it's given me a great deal of pleasure that a lot of the young people I have helped have gone on to take part in Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games and win medals and I'm very proud that I've given them that start in life. Volunteering here makes me feel proud to be part of the club. You reap the rewards from what you sow here. I do get an immense pleasure doing being a volunteer. I particularly enjoy coaching um, when I see the athletes enjoying, enjoying my sessions and also when I can see athletes progressing as a result of my sessions. Where we've got to today is through these band of volunteers and it gives you great satisfaction. You see the kids on here, the crowds we're getting and all that sort of thing. Everybody's taking it really on board and it, it, it's, it's doing really well, like, you know. And I always felt as though I wanted to give something back to the game and I feel as though I have put something back in, but people here, kids on the playing field, kids playing in the goal, there's nothing better for me, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We have people on the committee and 
who have never played football in their life, may have played a little bit of a Sunday football, but not to the involvement that we're in now. Like so, you know, people can come and get hold of a paintbrush and do a bit of painting or a bit of a bit of strimming or a bit of cutting the grass. Like you know, and with our volunteers, um, not just coaches but also marshals and officials, athletics, grassroots athletics wouldn't exist. So it is really essential, particularly in our own sports, that people give up their time and give something back. I've got an awful lot of fun, a lot of enjoyment. I've made some brilliant friends and I've also got to travel to lots of places all around the world through sport. So I would say, please get off the sofa and go and do something like get involved in sport. You'll love it. The Active Universities Fund actually funding this whole recreational Action everybody, it's a women's 70 kilos. Sophie Roots from England against Keisha Tanti from Wales. Just to reassure everybody, we had a full medical team looking after Emily and I'm sure she'll be as right as rain tomorrow. I'm sure we all wish her the best. And Keisha's straight in with a big powerful attack. Sophie's been able to block it. Sophie's used the opportunity to go into groundwork. We're going to start standing again. Big technique, what a beautiful technique. And it's all Saikomi, so we had a beautiful seven point throw, which uh, many people actually thought was a full Monty, the full Ipom throw. And then immediately Sophie moved into the hold down, which she got. But now, because Keisha's managed to get two legs around one leg, it's no longer a full hold down. It's Mate, and we're back to uh, the middle again. The referee will just check to see if the hold down equaled any uh, scores. Doesn't look as though it did. Big grip again from Sophie, big grip. And the referees uh, stopped the contest there now. I don't know whether he was worried about going to the edge or I saw something, uh, a small uh, minor illegal infringement. Again, Sophie, big strong attack. Wasn't a big throw, but she deliberately did it to take her opponent straight into the groundwork. Which she seems quite happy to do so, but... Roger Bostock, the referee, quite rightly, said he doesn't believe they're going to get anywhere, so they carry on. So, Keisha's got to come up with something now. She's certainly having a go. She's putting strong attacks in. You just feel as though she hasn't quite got the correct grip, especially with her left sleeve. She's certainly getting a right hip in and trying to throw her opponent as much as possible. Getting loads of advice off uh, Joe Meelan, a Welsh living legend, a top senior international. Commonwealth medalist for Wales back in 2002. Hey. 
We've got a penalty here. That's for Keisha going to the edge and going off the mat with no real justification. If it's in the big flow of the action, not a problem. But if you just uh, go for a wee dander off the mat, you're going to get penalised. Now Keisha's moved into the groundwork here. Pretty strong. She's looking for an arm. Sophie's defending it, but it's looking a strong position for Keisha. Oh, it's a mate. Referee stopped it. There's no lack of effort from uh, Keisha from Wales. She's certainly having a go. And you feel as though Sophie. Uh, Sophie going to the ground now. She's going for the strangle, but the seconds will tick away while she's working. As long as Roger, the referee, thinks that. She's getting some whatever it go. So the back up. So it's up to Sofa now. Sofa can just cruise. As long as she puts uh, enough attacks in to keep the referee on her side. Keisha's got another pe uh, has got a, a first penalty, sorry. So it's all up to Keisha really. She's now got to try and change the fight, dictate the fight. It just feels as though Keisha needs to do something a little bit different. We seem to get that right-handed hip attack again and again. You feel as though a combination, a link, a com change of side or something. It just feels as though Sophie can just uh, defend against that all day long. So it's up to Keisha now. Keisha Tanta from Wales. She's she's got to go for it. She's losing. Plenty of time left. And again, Sophie knocks her to the ground. No real throw, but it's another opportunity for Sophie to waste a few more seconds. Put another attack in the referee's brain. So he thinks, well, she's attacking. Doesn't look as though she's ever going to throw. And uh, Keisha's taking a bit of time there, getting a lot of uh, advice from a coach, which she needs to be careful of. And uh, Keisha's uh, gone off the mat again. She's going to get another penalty. That, a bit silly, really. There's no need for that kind of penalty. That's not what she needs. She needs to be going forward. She needs to be positive, dynamic. And it's a big throw from Sophie. Is it the end? No, it's Yuko. It's a five-point score. So that's one Yuko, five-point score. One seven-point score to Sophie. He just feels as though Sophie's doing just enough. She doesn't need to do anything, really. Just keep the referee on her side, not get any penalties. Keisha's already got three penalties as well, so she's sort of uh, double losing, if you like. Keisha's having a big dig there. Ochi Gary, Uchi Mata continued it, but you feel as though she, I think Keisha's uh, got a little knot there, I think, of some description, either an anchor or a shin or a knee. I don't think it's too serious. She's just nodded to uh, Joe Millen, Millen, the uh, Welsh National Court, so she's OK. Referees are just having a wee chat between themselves, maybe discussing uh, a potential penalty. Matt Deval from England, the national coach, is uh, just giving Sophie some reassurance, just keeping her mentally focused and on track so she doesn't just sort of think, oh, I've already won the fight before it's over. There's one thing about judo, it only takes a second to lose, one second from the end. You must keep your concentration. And we're just waiting now for Keisha to adjust her kit. So it's all perfectly legal and within the rules. And she's got another flop and drop. And that's the fourth penalty for Keisha. So that's game, set and match. Over and done with. Not a nice way to win a fight. But there again, Sophie did have was Ari and Yuko on the board as well. So uh, that's pretty good. We're enjoying a wonderful afternoon here at the Amateur Centre at the Sainsbury's UK School Games. The atmosphere is fantastic, the judo has been great, we've seen lots of action, lots of throws. And now we're moving on. So here we go, men under 60 kilos, Douglas Ventura Amaral from Brazil against Joshua Green from Northern Ireland from the city of Derry. Up to now, you'd probably argue that, uh, along with Scott Thompson, Douglas from Brazil has probably been the most impressive player we've seen this afternoon. Ah, well, that's good from Joshua. He's having a go. He's left-handed mainly, is Joshua, so that could cause a few little problems. Quite a lot of judo players don't like competing against left-handers, because it's not the average. 
massive technique. Well, well done, Joshua. There, that was as, as good a seeing egg as you'll see uh, from Douglas. However, Joshua managed somehow to wriggle off it and uh, land on his uh, front. So Joshua's still in the fight. There's no score. It was a very, very impressive attack, but no score. Slight height difference here, so whether Joshua's going to use that to his advantage, I'm not too sure. He's got his grip, but you feel as though Douglas has as well. Very, very explosive, Douglas. You just feel as though he's just too good, too strong. Once again, he's coming for a massive dynamic technique, but yet again, Joshua managed to turn onto his front. So there's still no score. Two impressive attacks from Douglas, but uh, nothing to show for it as yet. You feel as though Douglas is going to put in a, a combination, a number of throws together. Oh, that's it. Can't argue with that. Absolutely sensational. This afternoon, without a shadow of a doubt, Douglas has been the star from Brazil. Joshua, it's not his day today. I don't think he should be too concerned about that. He's only a young man. He can come back and fight another day. It's hard to believe to think that Douglas is not going to be the overall winner. He's in the final now. Excellent result. Joshua, quite rightly and sportingly, gives him a sportsman's hug. Quite right within the spirit of judo. Scotland versus England. Scott Thompson in the white, who has been explosive and dynamic today. It's been a sensation to watch. Callum Gain has been as equally as efficient. So it's the second semi-final. Who's going into the final to fight Douglas from Brazil? Both players working away there. Both at a bit of an angle of a grip, which makes it difficult to attack. Oh, and that's a beautiful Uchimata with a bit of a rolling Makakomi winding type technique, but no score. Callum read it well. Took Scott to the ground, and uh, Callum's having a little dig now on the groundwork. It's all about close, tight control on the ground. If he can contain. Scott has got the arm, can he Sangaku the legs, can he triangle those legs to get the control, he has done. He's got the all down on, but his, uh, Scott's got out of the all down. You can see how much power there is in these two young men. It's going to be an entertaining semi-final this one, no idea where it's going to go. A uh, bit of a flop and drop there from Callum. The referee will have clocked that one. He's probably just got away with that one. But if he does that one again, I reckon Bill Taggart, the referee, will have him for a little shido, a caution, a penalty. You just feel as though Callum needs to do something here because he's going to get penalised. Oh, absolutely. Wonderful technique there. Drop Sienaghi, drop shoulder throw. Marota Sienaghi, absolutely fabulous from Scott Thompson. Well, I think the final is going to be something very, very special between Douglas from Brazil and Scott from Scotland. It's going to be fantastic. Scotland versus Brazil in the final. Callum had a go there, but I think he's just going to upset that one. It does win a bronze medal if you get through to the semi-final. Well, that is certainly something to look forward to. The men's under 60 kilos final.
Here we go for the final of the women's under 44 kilos. Amy Platten from England versus Rachel Tal from Scotland. This is going to be a good one, I can feel it. We've got the left-handed Uchimata from Amy that she used early on a few times. Let's see what Rachel comes up with. She's swung in for the left-handed technique there. Amy looks as though she's just settling, trying to get her feel comfortable with a strong grip. Just tapping away with the foot. Just looking for that opening. And Rachel comes in again, so Rachel's putting some techniques in, not particularly effective, but she is keeping the referee on her side. Both players put in very, very uh, semi-ones. And uh, Amy tried a, a bit of a self-sacrifice throw first, where she throws herself first before she uh, opponent follows her. As with many finals, it's a, a lot of it's to do with the gripping. Both players look as though they've got fast hands. They feel as though this is going to be a fight where one person slows down, one person pauses just for a split second. They could be on the receiving end of a massive throw. Yeah. You can see where Rachel's playing this tactically exceptionally well, where she's preventing Amy to come in and attacks. And if uh, Amy's not careful, she could be on a Shido in a few seconds and she's not careful because Rachel's got the Yuko. What a fabulous throw. She managed to, uh, with a shoulder throw there, to see an Aggie, to get Amy onto her side. So that's five points. It's a five point score. Pretty good. Susan Wright, the Scottish national coach, just giving a couple of little bit of instructions to Rachel during the break. Yeah, it's good. Oh, Amy's got a nice little counter going on there as she's moved in for the strangle. Oh, fabulous. Well, Rachel will be a bit disappointed that as soon as she went to ground, she should have been aware there. And I'm sure she'll be disappointed thinking I needed to be aware and wide awake, but Amy took her chance. She was losing, but straight to ground. Pulled off the strangle. Ipon, Salamade, end of contest. And Amy is the winner. So congratulations to Amy Platton, Sainsbury's UK School Games 2015 champion. Well done to Rachel from Scotland. Takes a very credible silver medal. The next final is the boys under 50 kilos. Please clap your hands for Ryan Thompson from Scotland. And the Queen and Long Bangalore. Ryan Thompson from Scotland and Daniel Holt from England. The atmosphere is wonderful. Let's hope it's going to be an electric final. That's a bit of a wonder there. That's a silly mistake by Ryan there going to the edge. Yeah, a bit harsh, but the referee has no option. Went to the edge without just cause, so he's got a penalty against him already. It's not really going to help him. Now he needs to switch into the judo. Yeah, good footwork there by Daniel. Nearly tipped uh, Ryan over. So, start fight again, fight for those grips. Interesting battle, very tactical game of chess. Ryan's coming in very left-handed, Daniel's coming in right-handed. So it's tit for tat, working away. Bit of a weak attack there from Daniel. You can hear the Scottish team all crying out for a penalty. Don't think he's going to get a penalty on this one. A little bit of movement from Ryan there, which means he did move my balance a fraction. Good old Chigari attack in a sweep in there from Daniel. You just feel as though one of these players makes the tiniest mistake that they're going to get either picked off or countered or leave themselves open for a major technique. Now, Daniel's gone for the Sangaku, the triangle. 
crossing his legs. He can control, he has done, he's got him for the hold down. It's fantastic. Sangaku Gatami is holding down with those triangular legs. He's got it. He's also got hold of Ryan's foot to try and stop him from moving. Ryan is absolutely fighting to the death. He's not giving up. He's twisting, he's turning, but he's not getting anywhere. Daniel has got his arm around his hip and that's it. Well, I must be honest with you, I'm not quite so sure. Many of us believe that was going to be the result on that one. Fantastic result for Daniel. Congratulations. Wonderful to see such mature groundwork. That's the kind of stuff we're going to see in Rio next year. And it's good to see it at this level. Yeah, brilliant. Beautiful judo there. Four players having a go. Uh, I think Ryan Thompson was looking for the chance for the big technique, coming in with the left-handed Taitoshi, but not to be. into the women's final 70 kilos Kelly Peterson from England and Sophie Roots also from England be interested to see who wins this one now we've enjoyed a wonderful atmosphere today at the Sainsbury's UK school games but as mentioned before, when you get two players from the same country, often uh, the noise levels uh, will dip a little bit. And you can see where Sophie's got to control the top. She's got to try and get the leg out. Kelly's got two legs round one leg of Sophie, so we're in a bit of a stalemate situation. We'll expect the referee to call Mate, as he does. So they're off again. It's going to be tactical, this. It's going to be uh, very technical. So both players trying to find an advantage, look for a gap and an opportunity. Due to knowing each other so well, we'll have to wait and see if that opportunity arises. Well, it could open up. The penalties can change a fight. Now that Kelly's got the Shido, she needs to be careful now because you don't want two Shidos, which makes a significant difference in a fight. Oh, yes, fantastic. She's moved in for a bit of an Ochi Gary there. But no score. Follows straight to groundwork. But nothing's happening. Bill Taggart, the referee, brings them back up again. So you feel now that uh, Kelly needs to do something now to make sure she doesn't get the second penalty. And that Sophie might think, well, that's a bit of an opportunity for me. But she also needs to be careful not to get caught with a counter like she just did then. Sophie's moved in. She's got the hold down on. She's keeping it tight. Keeping it strong, but it's been broken. Not on strong enough, didn't have enough control. So we've got... Uh, over two minutes to go now. One of, one of these players has got to do something different. Change direction, put the combinations in, change tack. That's better from Kelly. Just feel as though they need to continue and do combinations, more attacks in one go, rather than just the single attacks. Both these players have got to make a decision. Are they prepared to risk something? Especially Kelly. Kelly is behind. She's attacking well, which could edge for uh, Sophie being penalised for not attacking. But Sophie does, is just doing enough to keep the referee on her side. She's uh, gone into the groundwork now. Looking for the arm, but it's... Uh, 
She's going in for the Sangaku now with the angle with the legs. Controlling. Kelly Peterson, but you feel as though she's got her over. Not quite sure if uh, Sophie, uh, Kelly feels particularly threatened underneath there. I'm not quite too sure. Nope, there you go. So Kelly was more than capable of getting out of the situation. So it's just over a minute to go now. Both girls, uh, both players look a little bit tired, but this is no time to be tired. These two players have got to make a decision. They've got to go for it now. One of them's got to be brave. One of them's got to be brave if they want to win this fight now. You just feel as though the single attacks aren't working. And there's a combination. Was that a counter? Yes or no? The referees are having another look on the monitors. It doesn't look as though they're giving a score. It's a 50-50. So he just feels as though Sophie's edging towards a penalty if she isn't careful. And Kelly Peterson, if she keeps going, might just get a score out of this. But she's allowing Sophie to get the left arm round the back, which is preventing this. Oh, and that's goodbye, Sophie. And that's the Wazari. Straight into the hole down. It's going to be a big ass now for uh, Kelly Peterson to get out of this hole down, but she's certainly trying. If she can edge up, she has done. She's onto her knees. The referee, quite rightly, has broken the hole down. It's no score for the hole down. Well, less than half a minute to go, 28 seconds. This is it now. Kelly Peterson has just got to go for it, hope for the best, put everything in. Just go for it. She's got to go for 10. All Sophie has to do now is within the rules is to let this clock tick down. Kelly's trying, she's putting those techniques in, but again, it's one directional. You just feel as though she needs to change direction, do something different. Sophie is uh, fully aware of what she's doing and feels quite confident to get off it. And Sophie can afford a penalty. I think she's going to take a penalty now just to tick over a few seconds. Yep. So she gets a penalty for going too near the edge. Won't be too concerned about that. She's quite happy to take that. She needs to be careful, though. Don't want to get another penalty. And that's it. Not the most exciting fight you'll ever see in the world, but that's what often happens when you get two players from the same country. They know each other inside out. It's always very tactical. So congratulations to Sophie Roots from England for winning the gold medal at the Sainsbury's UK School Games. And well done to Kelly Peterson. Fought exceptionally well today, but just a little bit unfortunate. This final is going to be something special, I'm absolutely certain. We've got Douglas Ventura, Amaro from Brazil, who has been devastating all, all day long. Scott Thompson has been so powerful, so strong. Who's going to win this one? It's going to be close and it's going to be explosive. I think we're going to see a lot of footwork here. Moving around, see if they can offset each other's balance, see if they can create a space in an opening. You feel as though at any split second, Douglas is going to blast him. That's a good Uchimata from Scott. Drops the Anagi from Douglas, but Scott got off it. Both players have both banged in a big technique so far. I think there's ultimate respect for each other, but I think there's also ultimate daredevilishness here. I think they're both prepared to have a go here. And Scott's got a good grip there. Scott can keep that grip, then he's got the ascendancy. However, unfortunately for Scott, Douglas is uh, more than prepared to throw left and right handed, which makes life uh, a little bit complicated. I, th I think Scott wants to get a good, strong grip, contain and control Douglas. And I think Douglas is quite happy to get a bit of a grip and fly in for techniques from all angles. Drop one there. It's gone through. It's exciting stuff, a little bit alternative that. We don't see much of that kind of techniques these days. Yeah. 
Well, I certainly would not like to call this one. Douglas has got techniques coming from all over the place. Scott's powerful and strong. If he gets his grip, gets control, he'll be in. He's gone in for a big one. Drops Ian Aggie, it's dropped shoulder throw. Douglas, at the last second, Douglas decided to go to ground. But quite rightly, the referee felt there was a bit of a gap there. Well, there's nothing in it. Two and a half minutes to go. This one could come down to, to uh, power, strength and fitness towards the end of the fight. But with the way that both players have been fighting today, I'm not convinced there's any fitness problems or power problems or skill problems. This is a proper, proper chess match. And again, Douglas came in for his dynamic shoulder throw and dropped down, but Scott read it very well and skimmed off the opposite side, so no score. Scott's definitely looking confident and positive. He's going for it, but also Douglas feels as though you feel as though he could pull anything out at any time. I think, I think Scott wants to contain Douglas. If he can contain him, get him on the spot, which he has done, and that he's got a penalty there now. A little bit harsh, I have to say, taking into considering how much activity we've had so far. But that means Brazilian is technically down, but judo-wise, it's still pretty even. What's going to happen now is Douglas is now going to have to open up and let's see what he's got. I'm absolutely convinced in his arsenal he's got more to come. The drop seeing Aggie again. We're going to have to see more than that because Scott's got that sussed. Biguchi Marta, bit of a drop. Douglas is going to ground. There's plenty of time left. There's a minute and a half left. The Brazilian national coach is trying to motivate his player. This is good quality control here from Scott, but Douglas is in again, but Scott has read it once again. And Scott's working away on the ground. Douglas has uh, countered that as well. He's got control of an arm. He's looking for an arm lock. He's, he's got, he has got Scott's left arm, but I'm not quite sure if he's able to isolate it and apply the arm lock. No, he isn't. So we're back again. Fitness-wise, you'd have to say Scott's looks the powerful, the more stronger one. He looks like he's up for it. Douglas appears to be tiring a little bit, but we'll have to wait and see. He just seems so dangerous. He just feels as though, there he goes. He just feels as though he can pull a technique out at any time. They won't let that technique count because it came from the ground. It wasn't counted as continuous. Some people may argue that's not quite right, but that's the way it goes. Scott's moved in for a strangle here, but he's not been allowed it. Douglas is looking extremely tired from Brazil now. There's 43 seconds to go. They've given the score. Well, that's a little bit controversial. I'm not quite sure everybody agrees with that. So the uh, Gray McLachan, the senior referee's got involved. Was Harry not given? Quite rightly so. So it's still, still down to the death. 40 seconds. Who's going to pull it out of the bag here? Who's going to pull it out of the bag? The technique that Douglas got, I think we'll get away with in Brazil, but I think with our rules, our interpretation in this country, I don't think he's going to get the score. Another drop from Douglas, but it looked a bit desperate. There's a chance for Scott in the groundwork. He's got his legs in, he's got his arm across. Can he join his hands? This is going to be strong, it's going to be tight. Can he do it? It's working, it's working. Put the pressure on, but Douglas is hanging on. Bill must be happy that something's happening. He's leaving him there. The referee's letting him get on with it. We've got, we're out of time, we're out of time. Can Scott pull it off? Can he do it? He's got, um, well, we've only got three seconds to go now, so... We're going to wait and see. Douglas dives in, there's nothing left, there's no time left. And Scott Thompson has pulled off a fabulous victory. Absolutely superb competition. What a great fight from these two young gladiators. Absolutely gave it all. The minutes just absolutely flew past. That was entertainment all the way. And uh, the skill, the expansiveness of Douglas just wasn't quite enough. The power and the strength, determination, guts and fitness from Scott Thompson won out in the end. Both these young men obviously have a fabulous future in judo. Well done, you two young men. Fantastic to watch. Congratulations, Scott, who's the champion of the UK school games. 2015 and our friend Douglas from Brazil you're very welcome to our country and congratulations on your silver medal